This is a short recap on the last project I just fixed. It was an Xbox One Elite Series 2 black control pad for my neighbour. The primary complaint was LB and RB button inconsistent and they are above the triggers. And this is board level, the four pins that keep them on the board. Turns out they didn't just need cleaning. Let's get rid of that. Oh, no, get rid of that. Just, didn't just need cleaning with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Uh, toothpick dropped straight onto the little white buttons on the opposite side of the board. I did GT85 lubricant spray them with some PTFE uh, Teflon spray, but it didn't solve it. It solved it for a little while. It reactivated the LB button, which was completely dead. But it turned out they needed the solder reflowing, so I put some nice new um, flux core solder on them, and that, that fixed them right up. And I decoupled that wire there, not to melt it on them two prongs there, and moved it to the side. That was the first issue, and that was solved. Come on, why aren't it scrolling? Here we go. Oh yeah, uh, what's this? Right side back paddles. <coughs> Uh, I don't know if that was P1 and P2. That might have been P2 position. The little plastic keep had snapped off. It didn't seem to be doing a lot that side. That button was clicking anyway at the bottom. But the top button was not clicking because the little paddle arm itself was too long on the radial and it was touching the rubber on the back. We got over that problem because he had another pad indoors and it was black paddles. So we switched the two and then both paddles on both pads were then clicking. So that's just something to be aware of. But I also thickened up the magnet width with Captain Tape and did a through hole fix that I do. There's a shot of it. Wrap the magnet, two sides, one top, so it just rolled over the top. But take that out of the way and then put in a U section of Captain Tape cut to a stencil I made out of a corned beef tin can. So you just slap that on the tape and then cut it with a Stanley blade tight to it and then poke it down through the holes and stick it tight in there and that shores up and makes the pivot points for your pedals a little bit thicker and it makes the the magnet housing itself tight fitting so it's less likely to rotate when you push the pedals because those bottom pedals they cantilever quite a lot and then they deflect and go sideways rather than clicking the button and the eagle-eyed of you will see that I repaired that corner broken plastic piece, the PCB keep, with some solder melted um, 3D printer wire that I had from a previous fix. And if you ever need to replace that, that will probably crack off, but you can always fix it again, can't you? You never know, it might even clean break under it and be able to get it off. I doubt it though. But... It served its purpose. What's next? This is left stick. Is this left stick? Yep, that's left stick position. And they are 3 by 3 millimetre trim pots for recalibrating your dead spot positions and shrinking your outer circularity on the gamepadtester.com hardware tester. And they're 1 million ohms resistance trim pots and they're single. You'll notice that one on the right is soldered in an odd position because this metal sponge in the middle, you can see here, that is where one of the magnets sits for the back pedals. And it slopes down to a, a zero clearance sort of position down this end, so that one's quite tight. And there is a double trim pot method you can use where you can use two 1 million ohms resistance trim pots and you get 2 million resistance overall. And then you have to turn it around and use, nope, don't zoom out. Turn it around and use that pin connected there. And then run the wire up from one of these two back points. Run it that way, up through that middle pin. And then over to a pot that would be about there. But there's a problem with placing one there. And then soldering it directly to that pin. I suppose you'd have to do it in at an angle. An angle, sort of diagonally. No, don't do that. 
and have it tight up to this centre one nearly, but then run the circuit through and round. It, it could work. And then the other one, that'd be a that one, that'd be a simple one to do a double trim pot on. Let's just look at the next picture. And this is what you would be up against. Where them little white triangles are, that post there would need to be cut off up here to allow you the position to put the trim pot in there. It wouldn't change anything, that's just a standoff for the board. It's a standoff pressure plate point for the board. So as you can see, this lump here, which is the back charging three prong point, that's already got a slope on it. So it, it you could chop that pin flush to that magnet, no problem, and you could get the double trim pot method in there. What else we got? We have yeah, this is the battery tray. Battery tray, that there is a screw post and there's a screw that comes towards you with the thread coming towards you and it's screwed into the other side of the, the board. So anywhere you've got a screw post or a standoff post, you can't have a trim pot and you can't get to it with a screwdriver. So if you put it up that up there, you wouldn't be able to get to it. So you have to do it under that magnet, just to the left. And this one, this was a laugh, trying to get these in here. This was the double trim pot method because the right, the left hand stick, that's left hand stick, isn't it? Is it? Hold on, hold on, let me just get my bearings. Yep, that's left hand stick, that's right hand stick. Yeah, the left hand stick circularity was, I don't know, I think it was like 13% when I started. So it didn't really need a lot of shrinking. So I used the double trim pot method on there not to go under 100% circularity and it just worked. And as I say, this side were millions on each axis. And that had a dead spot, sorry, an average over error, base average over, average error of 17.5% on the circularity. So it's over blooming the circle by 17.5%. That's all that error stands for. It's nothing to do with a dead spot error. So, as you can see, where my finger is, there that dot that is where one of the standoff posts projects through and it's very very tight and close to right let's get that off the screen and also there's three prongs that sit right there as well right close to that one and that is what you are dealing with that is the battery housing casing and the prong, three prongs, sit right there, right up hard to that bridge solder, solder weld, bridge point, which is that piece, that little L bracket, it's upside down at the minute, but that sharp edge point at the one the single dot, the little dot, is closest to the solder wire. If we scroll to the, no, don't do that. Scroll to the next picture. There you go. I decided I got so paranoid about it. It actually fitted, but then I filed that back point off at an angle just to make sure it didn't knock that or crack that solder point. Hopefully it will last. And here's another angle. I put a half round uh, filed through the plastic magnet housing of the trigger so that I could fully rotate the top hat of that trim pot right there. And the three prongs sit there, obviously, from the battery holder. And that's what it looks like when it's standalone. And none of it interferes with the, um, the trigger now. Is that everything? That's it. That's all to amend on how to make your dual shock. Sorry, it's not a dual shock, is it? I'm so used to doing dual shock fours. Bloody Xbox. There you go. That's how you do that. A few fixes. No, turn off.